Hi, I'm Jeff King. Uh, today I just want to explain a little bit about how I use a CDN to make your resources load faster for your clients. So the first thing is the CDN is a content delivery network and really it's a bunch of servers around the world that you can store data on. So if you have a server in the US but you have clients say in India there is going to be like a fair amount of latency to deliver the content from your servers all the way to, the, to your users in India. So what we do is we actually do uh, edge caching. Uh, so that will be a set of servers that you have access to store your data on. Um, and then these will actually be uh, what feed the users in India. Um, and typically what happens is if on the first request this server doesn't have uh, that piece of data yet, it will go and retrieve it from um, your set of servers. So that first call still might have that latency, um, but all subsequent will then have the, the very reduced latency. Um, so this is really great for getting uh, your global traffic um, to have fast response times. So that's just kind of an overview of what a CDN is. Now what I like to do when I'm developing a website or web application or even API for that matter, um, is I really look at how I can leverage the CDN. There's two huge benefits to it. Um, so on a typical web application, um, you will have to run um, some sort of web server. Now this can be like platform as a service web server where you don't have to manage too much of it, which is great. Um, but at the same time, if you put your resources here, um, let's say like, let's talk mostly about a JPEG today. So if you put um, your images on your server, when a user wants that image, it will have to request it from your server. Seems pretty straightforward. So that server obviously has like a maximum number of requests that it can handle. So. Um, I don't know, let's just say like you can handle a thousand requests per second. Um, and you have numerous um, static resources, typically, um, on your site. So you can have images and CSS and et cetera, et cetera, right? So in order to facilitate these being served, you actually have to potentially scale out the number of instances that you're going to run, which means um, that that's going to cost you more money. And there's not really much point of you running um, this kind of static content off of your own servers. So what I like to do is you'll have your, your web server um, and then you'll start with CDNs um, sitting alongside your web server. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit to what Microsoft Azure has to offer. Um, but this is kind of how I see the picture. So if you look at like, we're going to just stick to talking about a JPEG image. Um, so let's just say this is like a resource like, you know, in the header of your site or your logo or something like that, right? What I like to do is actually have three options available for, for this kind of asset. Um, so you can keep it on your web server. Um, so then your designers can just call it from the web server as needed. Um, pretty straightforward there. Um, you'd have like your domain name www.domainname.com slash .jpeg, right? Whatever that, that URL is. Now on Azure we have uh, two other ways to serve this content which is great. So this is just straight um, blob storage and blob just stores for binary large object. So what I like to do is actually store um, all those static files in blob storage. And that could be like, um, you could have content dot, um, your domain name dot com. Um, and then this would give you another way to call that static asset. Now the big thing here that starts really helping you is the servers for blob are all hosted in this case by Microsoft. And so it becomes Microsoft's problem to actually scale up the number of servers there, which they can do very easily for blob storage. <clears throat> and so that, that starts to kind of detract from potentially the cost of your web servers. Now, of course, there's a cost here in terms of bandwidth. 
um, and data storage, but blob storage is like the cheapest kind of storage that you can have um, in Azure or, or the type of storage that's really cheap on other cloud providers as well. Now secondly, this is where the CDN comes in because the way that the Azure CDN works is it can sit on top of blob storage. Um, so then you can create uh, something like cdn.yourdomainname.com um, and again serve out that asset. So now by doing this you give your designers um, or developers a choice um, as to where they want to pull the assets. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why you would choose any one of these. Um, if you don't care about like caching, so something like a logo, um, then this is a really great way to do it. Uh, I would recommend pushing as many assets to the CDN as possible. Um, secondly, if you're going to be updating the asset more frequently, then you might want to deliver it just straight off of blob storage. Um, and then the only reason really to fall back to your web server for these static kind of files is if you're worried about like cores um, or JavaScript files and things like that. Um, typically that I would fall back to using the web server for, for that type of static file. Otherwise I would try and push as much as I can to the CDN to give your users the best experience possible. The other thing that, um, that I do with CDN a lot is actually, so this is your www.domainname.com and this is your content and your CDN, so this is your web server, uh, this is your blob, and then this is your CDN of that blob, okay? Is actually to put another worker role um, in the middle, and this can actually um, pull data from a, like a database or a data store, and actually would store um, .json files. So let's say like um, product. So we have like a product.json file um, being generated like every um, I don't know two minutes, depending on how how often your your product data gets updated. Um, or else it could be like on kind of a push, like you add a new product to a queue and then it would it would deliver that. And you can actually then almost treat these like APIs. Um, you could have like um, content dot domain name dot com slash API slash product. And while you don't get the like when you you wouldn't get like parameter query strings, that's not really available to you. Um, but you would be able to serve out these static JSON files. Um, and again, the big thing here is it gets it off of your um, servers and puts it onto whatever your like binary storage provider is. And again, um, if it's data that doesn't change frequently, um, like you know weekly, monthly, uh, you can set the headers obviously, but um, you can put that within the CDN. So if you have a product list that's relatively static, like changes once a week, you could even have your users then call for that JSON off of your CDN URL. And so this is kind of how I see um, delivering fairly static content in a cloud environment. Remember just to try and remove your web servers from doing the actual heavy lifting. I hope this was really helpful and uh, please leave comments below. Thank you very much.